One of the really wonderful parts of what we're doing here at Arizona Myeloma Network is meeting some of the, the most dedicated, most uh, interested, and also the, the best quality people uh, working in the area of myeloma in, in the, not only this country, but in the world. And one of them, of course, is Dr. Robert Kyle. And for those of you who met Dr. Kyle last year, uh, you know what I'm saying when you say how we're incredibly fortunate. If you're unfortunate enough to have this disease, you're fortunate to know that there are people like Dr. Kyle who've dedicated their lives to doing the research and creating more interest and awareness in the research and in the treatment of myeloma. In fact, so many of the doctors, and we are again very fortunate, who are practicing right here in Arizona, and at the Mayo Clinic in particular, because Dr. Kyle is with the Mayo Clinic, um, have been trained by Dr. Kyle. And I'll just give you a little background because frankly, uh, as the saying goes, he doesn't need an introduction and we have it in here. But what is important is that his whole work life has been devoted to not only the research, but to the practice of myeloma. And he is with uh, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and is the uh, William H. Donner Professor of Medicine and Laboratory Medicine, and was the section head and chairman of the Division of Hematology. He uh, got his medical training at Northwestern University Medical School, and also did internship in internal medicine and training at Mayo Clinic. And he's also on the boards of international uh, organizations and uh, myeloma as well as scientific advisory committees. As someone said yesterday when we did our research seminar, um, when you Google the word uh, myeloma, <laughs> Kyle comes up. And if, you in, uh, and if you Google Dr. Kyle's name, you have so many, I think it was something like a thousand papers and so on. So I won't go through the whole list. Instead, I'm going to have the man himself come up here and educate us as he does. And uh, we welcome Dr. Robert Kyle. Thank you very much, uh, Barbara, for those kind words. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank Bar uh, Barbara and to uh, point out that she is the person who has put all of this together today. She's recruited all of her helpers here, but she is the driving force that has made all of this uh, possible. And we owe her a great debt for what she has done. It's a pleasure for me to be here again. It's also a challenge because uh, uh, you people with multiple myeloma here in the audience range from people who have barely heard the word multiple myeloma to people who are very knowledgeable and very sophisticated about it, and in fact, in many instances, know more than your uh, doctor about, uh, 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 about this disease. So I hope to uh, be somewhere in the middle, but during our uh, questions and so forth and uh, other meetings throughout the day or between uh, uh, sessions and so forth, uh, uh, I'd be more than happy to attempt to answer any questions. Let's see. There we go. Uh, these are my uh, uh, disclosures. They're mainly on advisory boards for ongoing uh, uh, studies of multiple myeloma. This is multiple myeloma. This is a bone marrow showing the abnormal cells that are producing the protein that you see in your blood and in your urine. 
In short, it's an overgrowth of these cells that are causing you the problem. This is the protein spike that people talk about, the tall, narrow-based church spire peak that is the uh, protein that uh, accounts for the uh, problems or some of the problems of the disease. About 80% of you will have a spike in your serum. Between 15 and 20% will have only light chains in the blood and urine and you will have oftentimes no spike in the serum but your urine will have that spike. And then there are three percent of you that do not have any abnormal protein in either the blood or the urine, that is the non-secretory type of myeloma. All three types uh, are equally important. First of all, one must make a diagnosis, and the diagnosis consists of the presence of an M protein that's a monoclonal protein in the blood or in the urine, an increase in plasma cells that are monoclonal in the bone marrow, and as I mentioned a moment ago, those are the cells that produce the disease. And then, most importantly, you must have damage from the uh, cells and or the protein, and you can remember that by the simple word crab, crab for cancer, and the C means elevated calcium in the blood, R is renal or kidney uh, insufficiency. <clears throat> A, A is anemia. And B are bone lesions. I want to emphasize the entity smoldering multiple myeloma. <clears throat> there are some of you here in this room who have smoldering myeloma and it is important to recognize that entity. You have an abnormal spike in the serum, you have abnormal plasma cells in the bone marrow, but you don't have any of the other features of the disease. Uh, your anemia uh, is non-existent, your calcium and creatinine are normal, and you have no bone lesions. In other words, no organ damage. About 20% of patients with multiple myeloma will have smoldering multiple myeloma. And it's important that you be observed. Uh, we're in the process of attempting to pick out those patients with smoldering myeloma who are at the highest risk for progression. And then to utilize prospective studies in which you would be randomized to treatment or no treatment and then followed to see what uh, benefit might occur. But at the moment, sit tight and continue to see your doctor. Uh, your risk of progression of smoldering myeloma is about 10% per year for the first five years. And then that means that at five years, half of you will still be smoldering. Then for the next five years, the risk falls to about 3% per year, and then after that, it's 1% to 2% per year. So if you have smoldering myeloma, hang in there. Uh, the future is better than the present.